assalamu alaikum i am dr shamim kausar and i am consultant critical care and general physician working as in charge section medical icu medical unit 4 jinnah post graduate and medical center karachi pakistan the european diploma of intensive care medicine is a post graduation qualification in critical care medicine which has been recognized as gmc uk post graduation qualification in 2019 for those who have cleared it after 2015 When I was preparing for this exam I found that there is very little information available about the exam pattern and expectation of the edic examiner after clearing both of its part in first attempt I owe it to myself that I will prepare a guide for my colleagues who are intending to appear or is struggling for this exam so here it is This video is exclusively based on my personal experience I'll highly recommend for all edic candidates to must go through the official website of european society of intensive care medicine edic is an exit exam with opportunities to grab a higher position at nhs trust hospitals of uk as compared to other exams of the uk you can secure a position of a specialist registrar if you have this qualification In Pakistan the critical care medicine is itself in some initial stages of recognition and I am likely the first few of the candidate who hold this qualification of edic As compared to FCPS critical care medicine the curriculum of edic exam is based on COBA twice that is competency based training in intensive care and requires a coverage of wider aspect of intensive care So once you hold this qualification you are definitely in a position to hold a better command to deal with all types of critical care patients including medical and related sub specialty surgical gynae ops burns peri transplant and somewhat pediatric critical care as well There are two sessions conducted each year for the edic exam one is in the spring and the other one is in the autumn so in the spring session the edic 1 is conducted in april and the edic 2 in may while a candidate has to register himself in november for edic 1 and january in edic 2 for upcoming spring sessions respectively and same goes for the autumn session so a candidate gets almost 6 month time to prepare after its registration which is actually a sufficient time provided that you have been practicing and covering the topics related to critical care in your daily practice this is the eligibility criteria for the exam in a nutshell i would say that if you have entered or completed a national training program in primary specialty with around 18 months training for intensive care for the part 1 and 24 months training for in intensive care for the part 2 you are eligible to attempt this exam i would emphasize here that the level of difficulty of this exam needs much more than this in terms of experience of dealing all variety of critical care patients i would explain it in upcoming slides if you have any doubt about your eligibility you should email to european society of intensive care medicine exam center be aware about premature attempts because if a candidate fails this exam he will not be allocated seat for the next one year and same goes for the edic part 2 once a candidate clears edic 1 he has three chances to attempt edic 2 so a candidate should visit the official website of european society of intensive care medicine and create his account This is optional to become a member of European Society of Intensive Care Medicine for the edit exam but I would highly recommend to be a member because this will give the examinee an access to intensive care module which are the most important stuff to prepare for the examination Moreover it has lots of study material on trending topics of critical care which might appear in the exam the other advantage of becoming a member of european society of intensive care medicine is that that fees of the edic exam 
would be subsidized for the members as compared to non-members. Please check for the expiration of the membership before paying for the membership. You don't need to wait for registration to open to create an edit profile. You can generate your edit profile anytime if you have intention to appear in the exam. This will require the evidence of your basic medical degree, primary specialty training, ICU training, your curriculum retire, and some other information to create an edit profile. A very important aspect to cover is to, to attempt the registration exactly on time because this is a first come first serve exam. Once you are registered, your seat will be confirmed in the next few days after confirmation of your eligibility through your edit profile. Unfortunately, if you fail to lock your seat for the examination, you should email to your Society of Intensive Care Medicine. They would guide you further that what to do. Like I was given a chance to come in the list of to be reminded for the next time. And as during first attempt I could not lock a seat, I was given a reminder by the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine for upcoming seats so that I could lock them on time. The membership fees for an year is 170 euro. As I mentioned before, that for the members and the non-members, the fees is different. So for the EDIC one, this fees for the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine members, this is 510 euro, and non-members, this is 710 euros. And same goes for the EDIC two exam, that non-members have to pay the higher fees. So the essential clinical exposure, this is the most important aspect I came to realize after clearing my exam and this is the main idea of preparing this video. If you recall the eligibility criteria, it's not really difficult to achieve for those who have been working in an ICU at post primary specialty level. But what clinical experience required to compete this fast and evidence based pace of the exam, especially part two is here. The most important exposure is that of complicated medical patient with multi-organ dysfunction. You have to have an exposure of at least two to three years to deal with such variety of patients. The neurologically critical patient, whether it's medical or surgical, are often the part of the short case and the long case of the exam. And the questions are frequently asked in the part one as well. Dealing with cases of polytrauma, and related complications in the ICU along with general surgical patient is one of the very important essential exposure which is required by the candidate to ace this exam. Cardiothoracic patients are often one of the long cases which are kept in the exam. So only the coverage through theory would not be sufficient. We should have a definitive clinical exposure for these patients. Key management issues of the burns and the transplant patient are also the part of exam. But unfortunately, if you don't have the exposure of such patient, you should have a strong grip on theory of these patients. By the time I appear in the exam, I didn't have any exposure of working in the ICUs of the UK, but I could nail this both part of the exam in first exam because of the extensive exposure of all these varieties of the patients. So if a candidate cannot make it possible to work and get an exposure of all such patients, they should have a strong theoretical background to manage such patients. So in this video, my aim is to cover some basics information of the EDIC exam as well as guide to attempt EDIC 1. The next part of the video is EDIC Decoded Part 2, which is exclusively based on guide to pass EDIC 2 exam. The link is given here. To study the six month dedicated time to prepare is almost sufficient for almost every candidate. For the study material, my top suggestion is going through the ACE modules of European Society of Intensive Care Medicine. 
there are 114 modules by this time and it covers almost all core topics of critical care with updated landmark trials to get the best of these modules you have to have some background of knowledge of the topic this module generally emphasizes on clinical inter inter implementation of the subject in some topics the basic etiology and pathophysiology is also given every candidate would need its own number of revision of these modules i read it three to four times before appearing in part one exam the useful website of the life in the fast lane has many sections related to ecg other curves radiology critical care compendium of almost 1500 cases this website will give you an idea that what favorite areas and the questions are asked in the critical care exam my osler is an app which can be downloaded for free and it has beautiful modules on practical procedures related to icu which are performed routinely and asked frequently in the exam for the textbook i would say if a candidate has already covered any textbook of the icu he should pick that rather than starting a new one i used to read os intensive care manual so this was my book for the critical care if you don't get enough time for the preparation and you have to decide between ace module and the textbook i would suggest to go for the ace module and get a strong grip on that apart from old intensive care manual the other books which are helpful for the exam preparation are multiple choice question in intensive care medicine by steve pennington intensive care medicine mcqs by steve pennington and other authors were few of the very helping books the pattern of the question is mostly type a that is best choice questions and the other one are type k that is true or false for each option they are mostly covering the bulk of the questions with the type a questions almost a month before exam the center gives the opportunity of try run through platform of the exam to the candidate the candidate would be asked for the equipment check before exam and proctor u registration this is an online proctor system for invigilation of the online exams proctor u service records the whole duration of the exam through your webcam on the day of exam the center would ask you to show your identity and uh, through a passport and showing your invitation letter which they would have sent you before for the examination invitation the room of the candidate is checked through webcam and once the center clears the candidate is entered in the examination the exam center guideline says that unfortunately if a candidate loses internet connection during the exam he should reconnect as soon as possible the exam center might ask you to get a check through your webcam uh, about your exam room again so this is highly recommended that a candidate should have a stable internet connection during exam the religious head cover is allowed while the face and the both ears should be visible to the camera throughout the exam duration this is a 3 hour exam with 100 questions the blueprint of the different domain of critical care medicine asked in the exam is available on the official website of the european society of intensive care medicine in this slide i would like to explain something different this screen is actually extracted from the result of the edic 1 exam you can see that the different domain of the critical care are allocated differently for the marks so based on the weightage of the different domains i have made certain conclusion for different specialty background candidate for their strength and areas to focus so if we look at again about the eligibility criteria there are many specialty who can appear in this exam after 24 months of intensive care medicine training 
whether they are belonging from the primary speciality of anesthesia internal medicine emergency medicines general surgery or other surgical speciality and even pediatric medicine perspective of appearing in a critical care medicine exam coming from different speciality would be different i have made certain conclusions for the areas of strength and areas to focus for different speciality top of all if you look at a candidate who is coming from the primary speciality of the internal medicine his primary speciality would help him in understanding the medical management of the neuro cardiac nephro infectious renal general care of the patient but he has to strengthen his knowledge and exposure in terms of the perioperative care surgical management of the neuro cardiovascular general surgery in polytrauma patient and practical procedures if you look at such chart for a candidate who is coming from the primary speciality of anesthesia he is strengthened already by the practical procedure organ support system respiratory and perioperative care but he has to focus on medical and the surgical management of neuro gastro cardiac renal and infectious disease patient patient general care which is done in the icu and pure medical aspect of management of patient as part of acute care the emergency medicine primary specialty is also eligible to appear in the adic exam after 24 months of training so the practical procedure organ support system medical management neuro respiratory cardiac polytrauma surgical emergencies they are very well aware about these issues uh, by their primary specialties but they have to focus on the patient general care which is done in the icu they have to focus on the pure medical and surgical management renal cardiovascular infectious disease related management and medical management which is usually done in an icu setup in a nutshell every candidate has to find out their own areas of strength and to focus once a candidate individualizes its preparation for the exam this is will exam will become easier for him and as i have already mentioned a premature attempt would not only waste the money of the candidate but also would make him ineligible to get slot for the exam for the complete next year I hope this video guide would help my colleague to appear and finally nail this ad qualification for any further query you can always email me on the given email address good luck and thank you